In this video, we'll talk about scene management, which allows you to load scenes in Unity. I'll show you a simple yet powerful set of scene management commands for you to load and reload scenes, and also commands that will load the next scene or the previous scene. The most important thing when using Unity's scene management is number one, addressing the scene management namespace at the top of the script, and also loading the possible scenes into the build settings scenes in window, scenes in build window. I'll show you two examples of using this script, one in a UI menu setting with a button press, which will load the main scene, and then one in game when maybe your character dies. If you, if you haven't watched my previous video on creating a UI menu, I'm linking in above. There are many ways to load and unload scenes, as well as having multiple scenes loaded at any given time. I'll save these details for a later date, but let's get started. Let's say that we have a scene like this, and this is our main menu, and we have an option to click a button, and that should take us to the first level. Right now, there's no functionality, and we wanna be able to load multiple scenes later on. Let's do the first thing that I had listed before, one is drag possible scenes in the, to, into the scenes in build window. And then we're going to talk about scripting. Jump back into Unity. And the thing that we want to look for is file, build settings. In here is a window that says scenes in build. And it contains all the possible scenes that we might load in our game or in the build that we want to be making. Right now, the scenes that I want to have are already in here. I'll show you how to, do, to load them in. You just hit delete. That doesn't delete the scenes, it just takes them away from that window. I'm going to go to my scenes folder and drag in the scenes that I want to load. Pull in my platform scene, my space scene, and my menu scene. Now the order that you pull them in doesn't really matter because I can rearrange them. And two things we want to note that when we have this have our items in our window is that we can possibly load our scenes by the name of the scene main space menu, or we can load them by the index that they are loaded in the build settings. So I'll show you both ways in a moment. And note that if we rearrange the list, the number changes. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping track of how the index is set. I don't need to hit save or anything, I just hit the red button, exit out, we're good to go. So. The next thing I want to do is push a button and load the next scene. Let's create an object and we're going to call it scene controller. It's an empty object and we're going to add a new script and we're going to call this scene controller also. It's just by coincidence that the same name, you could have them different names if you want to. The window that I had before had the next step that we need to do. We need to use, we need to have a line that says using Unity Engine Management. And that tells Unity that we're going to be using some code that they have written for us. I'm going to load up a code editor with our script. And so we're going to add the line here. It's going to be using Unity, dot, Unity Engine dot scene management. My IntelliSense is not working right now. I'm just going to close this file and reopen it from within Unity. Sometimes this happens if you're trying to type in some built-in code that you know that the script should be auto-completing, then um, just close that window or restart your code editor. In my case, I'm using Visual Studio Community. Now that we have this line here, um, we're able to access the scene management code. And let's start with the most simple ones. We're gonna use, we're gonna write our own function. I'm gonna call it public void load scene. And what this does is we're gonna press a button and then we're gonna tell that button that when we, we're gonna give a value when we press that button to be the next scene that we wanna load. We know that in Unity, we can use the name that I just showed you or the index. And in this case, let's 
use one that, write a method that uses the index. From here, we're going to access the capital S, capital M scene manager class that is within this unity engine.scene management namespace. And we're going to call on the built in uppercase L load scene method and feed it the value of index. What this tells Unity is let's load the scene index of whatever value that we feed it. Let's see, does it like everything? This should be good. Let's try this out. So let's go back into Unity and we're gonna find our button. Here's our button. There's a nested text in there. We just wanna select this button here and go to the inspector. And you'll notice that there's an on click method here. And what happens is when we click this button in the game, it calls this event and whatever is programmed in there is gonna call a particular function. Right now, it doesn't know what to be calling, so we need to feed it the script that we just wrote. And it's a, the script that we wrote is attached to the scene controller object. Once we drag it into this field, we can go to this drop-down menu, find scene controller, which represents the script of the class that we just wrote, and we should be able to locate the load scene method, which is showing us that it takes an integer value. From there, this field appears, and it might have a value set in there by default. We know that we want to load up the next following scene, which is value one, and we should be good to go. If we wanted to load the scene three, we would type in that value. So in this case, let's try this out now. Great, so this loaded our second scene which is exactly what we want to do. If we wanted to load this, the other scene, we can go back to our button and we would feed it the integer value of two, which is our third scene. Let's test that out. And there's our third scene. If we just happen to want to reload the same scene that we're currently on, which is represented by zero, we just go zero here. And that's loading it. Cool. That's the most basic way to load a scene by using index. We can copy this code, paste it here, and change it from index or well, integer index to cause it to be string. And let's say that this is going to be scene name. We're just creating a new variable. And from here, we can drop that into the scene manager dialog scene. And now this allows us to write in the name of the scene that we want to load. Let's quickly go back into Unity and test this one out. Let's go back to our scene build settings, just so that I can remind myself which, how I spelled these scene names. Let's say that I want to load two underscore upper S, uppercase S space. Go back into my button. And like we selected the other scene load scene function, we can drop down here and locate the one that is called load scene, but it takes in the string value. Let's click on that. And let's change, well, I already have it already on here. I could type in the other one, which is um, one underscore platform space scene, platform scene, let's hit save. Gotta spell it the exact same way that that's spelled for the scene or the object name. Let's hit play and hit start, and it loads the next scene. Let's go back to that button one more time. Let's change this to two underscore space and should load up our space scene. So this is a really quick, basic demonstration of loading scenes, and that really works okay. And we can use this same script in the next scene. Let's say that we want to use this somewhere else. We can either copy this, um, copy paste this script somewhere else or use this exact script in the other scene. So let's go back to the other scene and let's create a situation where uh, we have our character. I'm going to load up my platformer and I want, it, want to have it so that when my character moves into this fireball, it just dies. 
Oh, we go back to the main menu. Why don't we do that? My character walks into this area. You can do it, Unity. Walks into that fireball, it dies. And right now that's not programmed, so let's quickly do that. What I wanna do is use this sort of functionality and just call index zero. So if I have a script with my character, um, let's say that we go back into Unity, we'll create a new script, and we're gonna attach it to my Skelly. That's the character here. And we know that there's some colliders on there and a rigid body, so that'll allow us to detect when we die. So I'll call this detect, uh, let's say death load. Because the point of this is when we bump into something that's going to cause us to die, we're just going to load a particular scene. This is one way to do it. In the next video that I'm going to post, I'm going to show you a more flexible and um, robust way of writing scene management in that we can fill out this scene controller and be able to detect what current scene we're on and call the next scene or the previous scene really easily. But in this case, let's just eliminate all this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an on avoid on trigger enter 2D. And then we're gonna check the collision to say that if collision dot compare tag is death, I've labeled the object, that fireball to be death, then I'm going to first number one, say that I'm going to be using Unity Engine dot scene manager, scene management. And then in here, I'm going to call scene manager, not scene utility, scene manager. Oh no, okay. Scene manager dot uppercase lowercase ls and say that we want to load um, index zero. I'm going to start to the main menu. Or let's just call the same one that we're on. So we're we're in love scene one, we're gonna reload scene one. Let's try that. Jump into Unity. I want to make sure that our character has this script on it. Has the death load on here. And we said that when we bump into an object called a tag of death, we want to reload the scene. And so we have this tag of death. And this death object has a collider that is set to is trigger. Let's move our skelly towards its death, and hopefully we'll reload the scene. And we'll be able to tell because um, there it is. Great. Let's try this one more time. If we're not happy with that, then we can go over here and maybe let's reload the main menu. It's a it's a really um, painful game. You die once and you go back immediately to the main menu. There we go. Let me start it again. Cool. Let's go back to our original script and let's talk about some, some really handy tools that I've added to the one that I normally use. I want to be able to know which scene I'm currently on, so I can call some functions called load next scene. And that's going to be really handy because I don't want to have to type in the number every single time like I do in death load. If I die, then I'm going to say load the, reload the same scene. I can reload the same scene, the previous scene, or the next scene. And I need to know which current scene I'm on, right? And so in order to do that, I need, I'm going to use an integer and maybe we'll set it to be a public integer just so we can see it or serialize, serialize field integer. And we're going to call this current scene index. And this is just going to represent the scene that we are currently on, either one, zero, one, or two. And we want to be checking to see what that is by using a built-in method from the scene management namespace. And how do we do that? We're going to update our current scene index by grabbing the scene manager dot capital G get active scene open and close parentheses and then turning that scene because if we just set it like that it's going to return a string. 
and no, it's just going to return a scene type. Sorry, not the string. It's just there's a scene data type with a whole bunch of information. And we want to actually just get the build index. So we add a dot build index, and it's going to return that value here. Let's quickly go back to Unity. And we can see that when we load the first scene that we had, the main menu, we have this object here. And right now, it thinks the current scene is 0. Um, we'll just set this to be negative 10. So we can see this value change. As soon as we enter the scene um, in update or awake, it's going to say, oh, what scene are we in? It's going to be, it's going to tell us scene zero. If we take this script and go to platform scene, let's hit, hit save. And I'm just going to create a random object. This is going to be the same named object scene manage scene controller and throw the scene controller into this script, a uh, scene uh, object. We're going to call this play, and this should change to one. Great. So we know that this line of code is working. As soon as this script enters the scene, it's going to ask the scene manager to give us the active scene that we're in, and it's going to give us that build index. What's cool about this is then we can easily write some new functions that could be public, void load next scene and since we don't we already know what the current scene is we don't need to take any parameters so we can say scene manager and tell the scene manager hey load a certain scene and in this case it's going to be load scene and we're going to take the current scene that we're at be it zero one or two and call the next scene we're just going to add one if we're so when we call this and we're at the main menu scene, which is zero, we're going to add one to it. And it's going to load scene two. Cool. And here we're just going to copy paste and change next to previous. And then we'll just do some simple arithmetic and say minus. If we want to load the previous scene, then cool, we'll do that. Lastly, um, we can just write some more quick shorthand and say load menu scene and this will have the magic number of zero sometimes it's not good to do this this can be kind of handy though and so now we have load next scene load previous scene load menu scene come back into our unity and let's load that first menu scene and we're going to click on the scene controller rather than calling um, load scene and putting a specific number, let's go to that button and let's set the on click to not be just scene, load scene, but let's call the next scene. Just to check this out, we can see since we made it a public function, we're going to click on the load next scene. We don't need to feed it a value because it's going to already figure out which scene we're on and just add one to it. So in the end, it's going to look exactly the same but we're doing something more handy in that it knows which one we have. Cool. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how we can write something called a singleton pattern to allow us to have a single object with this scene controller script on it so that any object in the scene, um, be it um, the space scene or the platform scene, whenever you die, we don't need to attach a separate script called death or on death to call the scene manager. All the other objects could easily grab this scene controller with the script on it and call the load next scene or load previous scene. It's gonna be really handy. It's slightly complicated. That's why I'm saving it for a different video. If you found this video handy, please hit like and subscribe. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you guys later.